Big money out. 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 I'm Council Member Ben Kalos. I'm Chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations. Good government, I mean governmental operations. You can tweet me at Ben Kalos. And please, today we're using the hashtag Big Money Out. We're here today to get big money out of New York City politics. And we're joined by Citizen Action, Brennan Center, we will be joined by Effective New York, New York Communities for Change, New York Immigration Coalition, Tenants and Neighbors, Historic District Council, Urban Justice Center, 21 and 21, TransPAC, Patriotic Millionaires, and a Strong Economy for All, as well as candidates for City Council, one of whom is running against perhaps what, what an incumbent who is perhaps the worst that Albany has to offer the city of New York. Because no matter what your cause, the road to victory starts with campaign finance reform that amplifies the voices of residents over special interests. New York City has one of the model public finance systems in the country, one that has survived court challenges and even helped me get elected. As chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations, I'm committed to protecting and improving this small dollar public matching system. For those who are new to all this, New York City's campaign finance system matches the first $175 from residents by a ratio of six to one and gives participating candidates a partial public matching grant of a little more than half of the spending limit in competitive races. This leaves a uh, big money gap of two and a half million dollars when you're running for mayor. In 2013, five percent of the contrib contributions were the maximum allowed under law at four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and that money accounted for 49 percent of all the money that mayoral candidates raised in 2013. We now whether we like it or not, but we now live in the age of Trump with a president who once said, and I'm quoting here, and I can't do the impression, but he said, as a businessman and a very substantial donor to very important people, when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do, end of quote. It's statement like these and other well-documented cases that create an appearance of impropriety that leads residents to wonder about corruption in government. For consideration today, a modest proposal, introduction 1130A, to publicly match every small dollar. This would fill the big dollar gap with a combination of small and public dollars to get big money out of New York City politics. With this legislation, anyone could run for office entirely on small dollars. As an elected official, I am telling you that this would change how elected officials spend time and how city government does business. We currently pay our elected officials who must devote time to fundraising, which involves spending countless hours dialing for dollars from millionaires and billionaires, courting them over meals, at best convincing them that your ideals align or at worst making deals, soliciting their big money and creating an appearance of impropriety that leads residents to wonder about corruption in government. Under this legislation, elected officials hoping to run on small dollars would have to spend the majority of their time in their communities, meeting with neighbors at house parties, listening to concerns and seeking their support. If we want government of the people, elections must be financed by the people. So I'd like to now ask uh, uh, New York Immigration Coalition, Murad, if he can come up and say a few words.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Murad Awada. I'm the Director of Political Engagement at the New York Immigration Coalition. The New York Immigration Coalition is an organization of over 140 uh, agencies across the state of New York, with the vast majority of them located here in the city. Today, we stand here in support of getting big money out of elections. People who are impacted the most in elections as candidates are those who are people of color, immigrants, new Americans, and especially women. And we want to make sure that as we're moving forward in these uncertain times that we're actually allowing candidates from across the spectrum in New York City be allowed to participate in the electoral process so that they have a fair shot at moving forward in life. I want to thank Councilmember Ben Kalos and the other council members who are co-sponsoring this bill because this is what our New York is about. It's about giving everyone a shot. So thank you for coming out today and I look forward to testifying at the hearing later today. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Elliot Skip Roseboro from New York Communities for Change. All right, all right good morning. All right. Uh, we all have said for years and we know that big money is one of the uh, scourges of government, particularly when um, those with big money are able to um, kind of bend the government to their, to their will. Um, Councilman Scalos, uh, Kalos' uh, uh, legislation is one of the big steps to help and change this. Uh, as it is now, we have residents all over the city that uh, are being gentrified out of their neighborhoods. Rents are getting up to a level where uh, no one can afford to stay unless they're very, very wealthy. And we have to thank uh, the councilman for taking the step to take a huge chunk of money out of the system. Thank you. From 21 and 21, an effort to elect 21 women to the city council, where women are vastly underrepresented at only 13 out of 51 members. Uh, Moira McDermott. Good afternoon. Um, this is a, an important step to getting more women elected into office where they have significant uh, challenges with uh, fundraising money. Women, are, uh, re women receive a significant uh, more number of small donations and to fill that gap in a with, between special interests, political institutions and the structure that's been around for dec decades that women have yet to fully break into. In order to have parity within the New York City Council, this is a massive step of getting big money out of politics. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. Uh, Next up, it, it turns out that we've got some folks who are uh, fighting to, to stop having to give these big dollars. And I'd like to invite up Mars Pearl, founder of Patriotic Millionaires. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Kalos. I'm the chairman of a group called the Patriotic Millionaires. We have a group of hundreds of business people and investors from around the country who know that it doesn't work for us or for anyone else when we have a society with a few rich people and lots and lots of poor people. We need a country inhabited by people who make enough money to afford to buy things, who can afford to participate in our economy and in our civic life, our nation. We have to have inclusive democracy, including everyone in our, in our city and our country. The campaign finance reform system here in New York City has worked well. It has changed the face of this building, or at least the faces in this building behind me. And it's going to do well even better when we get out of the necessity of our council people and our mayor asking for large dollar donations. I like having dinner in Gracie Mansion as well as the next guy, better than some, but it doesn't have to be that way. We need a democracy where everybody can participate and the council people and the mayor represent everybody in the city, not just the big donors. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thank you. And to uh, get Wall Street money out of government, we have Charles from Strong Economy for All. All right. Um, oh. So if we uh, hope to address corruption, if we hope to, uh, to raise up and turn up the vote for regular working New Yorkers around New York State, we should act now to increase matching so that we can continue to curb corruption. 
right? We have done research that has shown that Wall Street and hedge funds uh, at an increasing pace are donating and trying to influence and dictate the outcomes of state races, of city races, of county races um, all around the country. New York has been a model, but if we want to keep up, we need to do more. We need to act now uh, and we need to uh, continue to fight corruption with this uh, public financing model that has really been a shield uh, for New York City against corruption. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, from Brennan Center, we have Brent Ferguson. Thanks, Council Member Kalos. Uh, my name is Brent Ferguson from the Brennan Center for Justice. Uh, New York City's public matching system is a great one. As people here have said, it's served as a model for the country. It's really changed elections in this city over the past few decades. But we have seen over the last few years certain candidates still relying on those big contributions of two or three or four thousand dollars. So we need to fight to improve that system. And Councilmember Kalos's bill will do that. Um, it's a great start in the fight against big money. Uh, but we need to go further too, we think. We need to lower those contribution limits for citywide candidates and try to ensure high levels of public matching for people that agree only to rely on small donations. So let's keep up the fight, let's pass this bill today, and let's keep working in the future. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll also have a number of tenant organizations here, and we'll hear from Harvey Epstein from Urban Justice Center. Thank you, Councilman Kalos. And we should think about the future of New York. What do we say to a, a tenant, a low-wage worker, who says, you know, I care about the city and I want to do something? What barriers are we going to put in front of them about running for office? Right now, we've talked to tenants and tenant association leaders who say, I really care about my community, but I can't raise a quarter million dollars. I don't know those people to be able to bring into my neighborhood my values and my beliefs. So how do we support people around the city who care deeply about their neighborhood, deeply about their city, deeply about their community, but don't, they have full-time jobs, they work hard, and they can't take off six months to do this? What do we suggest? We create a system and a structure that allows them to run for office in the city of New York that allows them to get the 10, 20, and maybe $50 donations from their friends, from their neighbors, the people who care about them, and say, that's enough. That allows you to run competitively in this city. And that's what this legislation does. That's what we stand for in New York, and that's what we need. So thank you, Councilman Kalos, for doing this bill. Thank you. Uh, on my way out this morning, my, my wife reminded me I'm still paying off the credit card debt I accrued while I was running for office uh, now almost four, uh, four years ago. Uh, next up, we have uh, Katie uh, Goldstein from Tenants and Neighbors. Good, morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here supporting this legislation and efforts to try to get real estate money out of politics. We all know that New York is facing an immense affordable housing crisis, and one of the core reasons of that is real estate's oversized influence in donations, in funding candidates, and getting their policies to move forward. So in order to make sure that our members, who are low and moderate income tenants of New York, are able to afford to live in New York, we need candidates who are not being funded by big real estate interests. So we're here to support this bill, and we're going to be testifying this afternoon also in support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, from Citizen Action and uh, the uh, Chair of Working Families Party for Manhattan, we have Jeff Gold. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Kalos and his staff. This is a way of casting hope against cynicism. Our president, as Councilmember Kalos said, partially, you know, got elected in part because the public has become so cynical about one dollar for one vote that, you know, they, they don't even want, and they don't vote anymore. What we have in New York City is a demonstration model that in this bill can make a good campaign finance match system that you can look me up and see my small donations and the matches they go to actually does help us elect community-based representatives. And it includes friends of mine of very modest means who have work-a-day jobs who've been able to run and get elected to the council. So this is a critical issue, not only for New York City, it sets a demonstration model for the United States at a time when Citizens United, the Supreme Court decision, has so distorted campaign finance that it's, a, it's as we say in my ethnic group, a shanda, a disgrace. 
So I strongly, and all our organizations, the Working Families Party and Citizen Action of New York, and the main reason I'm in these organizations is to reform the campaign finance system and make it transparent, is to support this bill. Let's make New York City not just a model of campaign finance, but the model in this very dark time where we're trying to fight back and open up government. champion for preservation of communities throughout the city. We're joined by Historic Districts Council and Simeon Bannister. Hi, I'm Simeon Bankoff, Executive Director of the Historic... Sorry, Bankoff. That's all right. <laughs> um, Executive Director of Historic Districts Council. You might ask, what does campaign finance have to do with historic preservation? Historic preservation is a community-based, citizen-driven movement. Without bills like this, without campaign finance reform, we'll be fighting a perennially losing an imbalanced battle against the real estate forces that seek to reshape the city for the rich and super rich. We throw our support behind this. We are proud and pleased to stand with our colleagues and with Council Member Kalos on this. Thank you. Thank you, Simeon Bankoff. Uh, we're also joined by a fellow uh, member of the Progressive Caucus, where we have a lot of support for this legislation who happens to chair the Committee on Immigration uh, and is always proud to stand with New York Immigration Coalition. If you can join me in welcoming a leader in reform, Carlos Menchaca. Thank you. Thank you uh, to council member and chair of the committee we'll all be going into now, uh, Ben Kalos. So my name is Carlos Menchaca, New York City council member, Sunset Park Red Hook. I'm really happy to be here to be supporting this bill, the concept of this bill, and really the message that we're trying to send to all New Yorkers, that if you live in our neighborhoods, if you have $5, we want, we want those dollars, we want your voice, and we want you to be the energy and the fuel that takes these campaigns and makes them real. I would not have been here as a city council member if it wasn't for campaign finance uh, reforms uh, that allowed me to take those small dollars and make them big. That's what the message was on the ground when I first ran, and that's the message that I'm continuing. It's so easy as incumbents to go back and be like, yo, we're done with the low, the, the, the low dollar donors, and we're gonna go get the big dollars. And that resistance is real. That is happening right now for so many of us that are running for re-election, but this bill really kind of shows the real impact to staying and maintaining the conversations, the connections, and the relationship with our small dollar donors. These are folks who are low income, these are folks that are immigrants potentially, with families that want their voices heard. That's what I'm committed to um, as a council member um, and as now a candidate as well. So thank you for Ben for really pushing this. This is something that he's been thinking about for a long time, and I support him. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, speaking of candidates, we are joined by a couple. Uh, and I'd like to now ask uh, Keith Powers uh, to uh, speak yeah. on this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you both council members for your support of a really important initiative. I can tell you as a first time candidate how, how hard it is to go out and start fundraising. But when you come from the community and you're able to raise money from low dollar donors in a matching program six to one, it makes it easier. But we should still go further and we should make sure that any single candidate who wants to run for office can go to their community and raise money from it and get the full matching fund to be able to participate in the democratic process. From somebody who comes from a strong middle class community, I want to make sure that people like me can continue to run for office and in the year Years ahead that we'll keep supporting them and providing them with the campaign finance system that supports low dollar donors for running for office. So thank you guys for, uh, for this uh, putting this together today and I, I hope that the City Council will pass this really really important bill. Thank, thank you. you. When I ran for City Council I had to run against a quote-unquote incumbent. I had to run against a member of the Assembly. Uh, back then a council member made 112, now council members make 148 thousand dollars which is almost twice what assembly and senators make and that's starting to become a problem because albany is beyond dysfunctional and elections can't be a game of musical chairs uh, and so albany's broken the new york state senate is broken and perhaps one of the worst parts of the new york state senate is uh, senator ruben diaz Junior, who represents senior, the senior, 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 thank you, who represents the uh, worst of what Albany has to offer, and we need people who can run. And so uh, we have uh, one of the candidates here with us, Elvin Garcia. Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about your race. 
Thank you, Councilman Kalos, for your leadership. Uh, in the era of Trump and in the era of Citizens United, now more than ever, here at the local level, New York City has to lead the nation to get big money out. I am running against a quote-unquote incumbent with a lot of privileges. Me coming in as a son of an immigrant, as a public school kid, K through 12, someone who ne doesn't necessarily have a rich uncle, uh, but the current public financing system has allowed me to compete in the, in the race of ideas, which is what our democracy should really be about. Under the current system, in terms of the big money gap, just to give a, a real perspective on what this bill really means, I have a $35,000 gap to close to reach the maximum spending threshold. If this bill were to pass, based on, on those calculations, I would only need to raise $6,000 and I would be done. I have four fundraisers from now until May 11th. You're more than welcome to come to help me close the gap. Uh, but in all seriousness, this proposal makes 10 small donors feel like 100. And this is how we begin to resist in Washington by strengthening the people's voice here in New York City and leading the rest of the nation. So thank you so much, Councilman Kalis. For thank you. Thank you. So uh, for those watching on Facebook Live or at home, uh, you can uh, participate in the conversation, hashtag uh, uh, big money out. Uh, you can also join us at 250 Broadway. We're at the 16th floor, uh, and that's on April 27th at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, if you missed it, you can still email your testimony, your story for why small public matching of every single dollar matters at uh, policy at bencalos.com. But uh, together, we can take back our government from special interests, and your voices can be amplified every single one of them not just half of them because if you want government by the people it has to be financed by the people thank you very much